In this video, I want to take a look at the light mass properties of a light. Now, there's only a few of these, and they're pretty straightforward, so this will probably go fairly quickly. We're going to open up the light, expand light, light component, expand light mass, and light mass settings, and there are four properties, the first of which is indirect lighting saturation. Now, in the previous video, I set up a nice little light volume. It's got a point light inside of it, and it's got a static mesh inside of it. Now, this is an inclusion volume, meaning that only objects that are inside or touching this volume will be affected by this light. And we can already see the result of that here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of our light. So let's go into light component. Let's expand the light color. Actually, let's not expand it. Let's just grab our little magnifying glass, and we're going to set this to an intense red, like so. Now, once again, you can already see the effect of our inclusion volume, so only this mesh and the floor are actually going to be lit. But now let's go back into the light mass settings. We'll close up light component. We're going to take the indirect lighting saturation and set this down to zero, meaning we are completely desaturated. And when you desaturate something, you remove all of the color info. Let's do a quick build. And we'll take a look at what we got. Essentially, what I'm expecting to have happen is for our indirect lighting, meaning our bounce light, to essentially be black and white. So it won't be sending out any of that red information anymore. And if we close out Swarm and close our little warning, check it out. Where we have nice red lighting on anything that was directly lit, anything that was lit specifically through indirect lighting is just receiving regular white light. So we've completely desaturated it. That's how that property works. Now down from here, you have indirect lighting scale. Without going through another build, this just allows you to boost or tone down the amount of indirect lighting you've got coming from this light. If we were to kick this up to two, we'd get twice as much bounce, uh, bounce light as we have now. Down from here, we have light source radius. And this is actually a shadowing control. If you ever shown a light, let's say if you have a really big flashlight with a really huge lens, or maybe even a spotlight, and you shine that on the wall and stick your hand in front of it, you ever notice that your hand, your shadow, actually gets a little bit fuzzy on the wall? That's because you have a huge radius of light that is hitting the wall, and it's kind of wrapping around the edges of your fingers, coming in from all these incident angles. However, if you have a tiny little light source, like an LED, you'll end up with really, really sharp shadows. And that's what you're simulating here. As you increase your light source radius, your shadows are going to become softer. That's really all there is to it. Now down from that, you have your shadow exponent, and that controls the fall off of that softening. So if you picture a soft shadow for a perfect circle, okay, meaning you would have kind of a fuzzy looking circular shadow on the wall, the fall off, the shadow exponent controls the fall off from the fully shadowed area to the completely unshadowed area. And the higher this is, the tighter that fall off exponent is going to be. So that is a quick look at our light mass properties, which will wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.